This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Where do you stand on the brace wearing? Does it make Arkansas look bad? Do you really care? Can kids just be kids? Your opinions on the controversy or topic, whichever way you want to you wanna call it. I mean, whatever makes the headline sound better, I guess, because controversial, mm, I don't know how much controversial it is. We'll get to a lot of those texts on uh, throughout the show, so keep sending them in 877-377-6963. But now we're going to welcome in our... Normal Tuesday guest here at 1115, Grant Hall. Grant, I appreciate you joining us, even with Phil being out. What, what's your stance on the neck braces? Kids being kids, or have, have is it crossing the line? Well, first of all, uh, I think it's Wednesday, uh, Drew. Oh, right I'm now. sorry. Yeah, it is Wednesday. My fault. <laughs> I mean, time flies, man, when you're oh, having it does. fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, it wouldn't be my choice. I mean, that was a long time ago. Uh, Bobby, uh, I actually got along okay with him. You know, it, it's interesting when you, you watch, the guy's 61 years old and he looks pretty good. Uh, his hairline is receding as all of ours are <laughs> uh, at a certain age. But uh, I, I saw some footage last night of him really getting on somebody and he, he could get on people with the best of them, you know. But uh, I don't know, he, I, I kind of hit it off of him a little bit before he, uh, started coaching at Arkansas and he was just here observing, you know, that first, uh, month. Mm-hmm. And so, um, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I, I, he, he has said some really nice things about Arkansas. Uh, you know, three years ago, I think he spoke at the Little Rock touchdown club and didn't take a fee and so forth. Um, I, I don't think that, uh, Arkansas is going to need too much animus to win this game. Uh, now they'll, Bobby, they'll make a good accounting of themselves offensively, but they've got a a good quarterback who's completed, what, 68.5% mm-hmm. of his passes, I think, and a, a pretty good running back averaging four and a, and a, and a nice receiver and so forth. But they, I think where the game, you, you would – let me just I'll, – I'll do this, Drew. I'll put the over-under at 442 rushing yards for Arkansas. Do you want the under or the over? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. The way Rocket Sanders running, Dominion, uh, Johnson's probably going to be back. A.J. Green could have a big game. That, that'd be pretty close of a line there, Grant. I mean, anywhere around four – North of 400 is definitely in play. Now, we know what Arkansas is going to do on the offensive side. I mean, we've seen it the last two weeks. We've seen it through the old Sam Pittman and Kendall Browse there. They're going to run the ball. As long as they can run the ball, they're going to continue to run the ball. But on the defensive side, and the word offensive genius gets thrown out when you're talking about Bobby Petrino a lot. And it's not just this week. It's, it's followed him for most of his career, and rightfully so. The, the man really does know how to draw up a scheme and draw up some darn good offensive plays. Where do you think he's, you know, wanting to truly attack this Arkansas defense? And, and how good of a plan do you think he can come up with? I mean, he's got a good team. He's got a great FCS team. But let's face it, a top 10 FCS team should not be able to beat a top 10 FBS team. Yeah, that's right. He'll have a good plan. You know, he when he used to do his coaches show, uh, I always found it amazing that on, on those Sundays uh, after the games when uh, probably my, the coaches shows were a little bit bigger deal back then. People watched them and uh, he would always like he would go through plays kind of matter of factly and he'd say, OK, here's this play. And, and these three other options were open if that hadn't worked. And, there, you know, there was always somebody open in his offense. And if he had good quarterbacks who could deliver the ball uh, as Arkansas had Ryan Ballot and Tyler Wilson back then, they could be pretty potent. And I think they will, you know, be, especially in their level, I think they're number six in, in their division uh, with this Shelley, who I think played at Utah and Utah State, which is interesting. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the the problem comes in. I remember one time uh, Harold Horton, who was a, a very good uh, coach at Arkansas and he won a couple of shared national titles at UCA and he was over there at practice one day and he, we were looking at the uh, the roster sheet and he pointed out something is you know on one side was the offense on the other side was the defense and the defensive roster only went about two-thirds of the way down the <laughs> sheet and the offensive roster went all the way down 
And, I mean, you know, if, if, if football is cops and robbers, as Lou Holtz uh, once mm-hmm. described it, uh, Bobby enjoys, as you say, moving the ball. Uh, Lou Holtz loves the offensive side of the of the game and kind of depended on other people for the defense. And I don't know what they'll be. I mean, if, if somehow, you know, I guess anything can happen in a football game, right? Mm-hmm. If somehow Missouri State could – keep the ball for 34, 35 minutes, then you could maybe have an interesting game. But, uh, man, football these days, I don't know about you. I went to the game last week, and actually for about the second, I've been going to Arkansas games since 1955 as a little kid, and it's about the second or third time I've ever sat on the east side. And it's just, it's, you know, like football games are now like half a rock concert. Mm. It's just amazing the noise, and even in a, in a in a suite like we were in, there I was in a suite that held twenty four people, but the windows were open, and so you, we could hear the fans above us. And I think probably your best fans are the ones that sit in the nosebleed section, where they're the ones that make a lot of noise. And I could not believe the ear splitting noise uh, from that side. Now you know in the press box sometimes it's it's muted a little bit, mm-hmm. especially if the windows are closed. But uh, it's a it's a happening thing right now again, and these fans are excited to have the number ten team in the country. Oh, that they are, and they're going to be a, a pretty big crowd this week. How do you think that this um, a game is for, as far as attendance goes is going to rival you know what you got from Cincy and from South Carolina? Heck, you know, I don't know if it's going to be Texas big, but for an FCS opponent, this might be the biggest attended game uh, this year uh, across all of Power 5 football when it comes to playing home games against the FCS? Yeah, that's kind of an intriguing question. I don't think there'll be the crowd that, that, that you know, it, it fell off a little bit last. I didn't ever see what the official attendance was last week, but it fell off from Cincinnati. You, you could tell up in the upper deck. But uh, this one, yeah, maybe because of Bobby. Uh, but if, you know, Arkansas has got seven games in Fayetteville this year, none in Little Rock. Mm-hmm. And so, Really, uh, fans are going to have to pick their spots a little bit, especially if they don't have season tickets. So I, I don't know. I mean, I, what would you think? 60 plus, something like that for this game? I, I mean, maybe you're right. Maybe it'd be more than I think. I mean, even if it's 60 plus, I mean, where else are you really drawing 60,000? Even, even in the SEC. I mean, we hear it all the time from other fan bases when, and every fan base when it comes to scheduling home games. Yeah, you, you want those cupcakes, but you want, the best product for your season ticket for your the biggest bang for your buck. So I think if it's over sixty, gets to sixty five, it probably will be the biggest attended game um, in the Power Five when facing an FCS uh, opponent. Grant, how much do you think we'll get to see Malik Hornsby or uh, Renfro? At, at the quarterback spot this week with, you know, hopefully it being, you know, that cupcake type of game? Well, I think you might see Cade Fortin some. You know, he ran uh, the number two offense yesterday in practice, and he, he's, a, he's a good player. Uh, I, I think we saw Hornsby maybe four or five plays in a row in the game last week. You know, uh, I think you're going to probably see a little bit more from him, from mm-hmm. the receiver, and, and even lined up in the backfield. I mean, they're – lining him up different places, being creative with him. But I think Fortin's your number two quarterback. And, and so, you know, you, maybe you see him some. Mm. Do we get a first look at Isaiah Centania too? Uh, I, yeah, I don't know what the plan was. You know, I, I knew that he was in the plans uh, in the return game. Um, but I don't know if they are, are uh, hoping for a red shirt for him or not. He He's probably too good to, to do that. Uh, he's got – blazing speed that I think would will uh, please the fans if he, if he does get in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Grant, I do want to touch on, on your, your Cardinals is Albert Pujols. He got to 697 over the weekend in, in Pittsburgh. Still got about 20 games left in the season. Seems like a no-brainer at this point. He gets a 700, right? Well, it, it's interesting to see what they do with him. You know, last night he got an RBI. He's at, at 2,199. So tonight you could see that milestone along with, uh, uh, you know, Wainwright and, uh, and Molina. They're going to set the all-time battery, which may never be broken the way baseball is. So you got those things going on. But uh, some in St. Louis, I heard some discussion this week that maybe you play him every day 
until he gets to 700. Uh, I don't know that they'll do that. I mean, yeah, just, you know, a few number of games left. Um, but, and then I guess if they got to the point where they could clinch Milwaukee, maybe you'd move him up in the order. Like, you know, the Yankees kind of been doing that with Judge. And he had two, by the way. <laughs> yeah, he did. He's up to 57 and what, 123 or whatever it is. Uh, uh, actually threatening a little bit the triple crown. So, uh, that, that's all exciting stuff. I don't think the card, they don't have too many more home games left actually after this week, I don't think. So, um, Maybe he gets. Maybe they rest him two, three times more before the season's over. But uh, I think he's got a great chance to get to seven hundred. I, I do too. I mean, he's just he's hitting so well, especially against left-handed pitching. And they close out with six games against the Pirates. Like that's got to be a clear-cut sign that he'll at least get three uh, for the remainder of the season. Real quick, Grant, before we let you go. It, uh, reports have come out about the Live Golf purse to finish out the season of fifty million. I don't really want to touch about Live Golf, but do you think that we'll ever get close to a number like that for the PGA? No, I, who knows in somebody's life, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's kind of staggering, isn't it? Uh, I don't even know what to say or think about that. I, I have not paid much attention to the to the Live Tour, you know. Um, just uh, my interest is still in the PGA Tour. And that one thing you have to acknowledge, though, is that it has brought money up on the PGA Tour. And there, you know, people are saying, like, where, where was all this mm-hmm. money before? Uh, and so in that sense, maybe uh, I saw last night Shoffley was talking about Mickelson. Maybe Mickelson is kind of sitting there smiling somewhere about, uh, you know, the, the whole thing about a rising tide lifts all boats, at least financially. Uh you know, regardless of what you think about live golf, it, it has improved things for the PGA Tour players also. Mm. That it has. I mean, the money just came out of nowhere, right? The PGA Tour just seemed to suddenly find that like, extra money to add to multiple different purses throughout the PGA Tour Online for next. It's the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports, contests, and events with first-to-market odds and lines. Find reviews and news for every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, eSports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information, from live in-game betting, props, and futures. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to join today and make your first sports bet. Use our promo code BELIEVE50 to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's BELIEVE, B L E A V 50. That's BELIEVE, B L E A V 50. Bet Online, where the game starts.